Hey, what a treat. We have a New York Times bestselling author, Christina McMorris, who calls Portland home. And her gripping new book, Sold on a Monday, draws from a picture you might know. It's a real life inspiration. And she's joining us now with a closer look inside. And you're telling us that you saw a fairly famous or at least well-known historical yeah. photo and it spurred a whole book for you. It did. It did. You know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words, yeah. of course, in mine. You know, it's like worth a whole novel, apparently. And with my uh, the, my story, is, of course, as you see on the screen, it was inspired by a photo a lot of people have seen. It's very shocking, especially as a parent. You've got four children sitting on the stoop in Chicago. And this was 1948, actually, mm -hmm. not the Great Depression. Not the Great Depression. No, which surprised me, which me is why too. my story then takes place during the Great Depression. But as you can see there, it said four children for sale in choir within. And as a mom myself of two young boys, I thought, what would bring a parent to that point, that you would actually ask for money in return for your kids, not just trying to give them a better life. So that's where the story first came from. So the story came from there, and then there's questions about the authenticity of that photo, but that didn't right. really impact your story. Well, it actually did because I didn't think it would at first, um, but when I came across one mention in an article that said some family members claimed the photo was staged, I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. That I felt like I could bring something kind of new to the table with the story instead of writing from the kid's perspective, but instead of a reporter's perspective. And he makes sort of a questionable choice that seems harmless at the time, and yet has devastating consequences for everyone involved in the photo that he takes that pretty much goes viral at the time. And in real life, you've actually tracked down one of those children. I did, a couple family members actually, but specifically one of them in the photo. She is just the most wonderful, sweet, warm survivor that I've ever met. And she was sold for $2 a year after that photo was taken. So there's question about the authenticity of the first photo. However, once it went out there, it does beg the question if it's kind of a self-perpetuating um, in that, or you know, self-fulfilling, I should say, right. in that uh, she was sold for $2. She claims that her mother sold her for bingo money, and her brother was crying, didn't want to lose his sister, so the farmer and his wife taking them in said, we'll take him too. And they were actually mm. used as farm labor, very, very hard life they lived. So the result of that is sold on a Monday. You've yes. had several other success stories, life as a writer and a mom. How do you make it work? Yeah, when no do you kidding. find the time? This takes a lot of research. It does, it does. But I think I balance it probably the same that you two do. So, you know, we it's a full-time mom and then also a full-time writer. And so it is, it's a juggle. I've got a tour coming up of 50 stops oh in, in three months. So the good news is you're catching me in the early part that I know my name <laughs> and the book. And I'm Where talking about are. the correct book name too. I'm really hoping are that Are you an early right. morning writer or late in the evening or how do you figure it in? Um, usually it's when the kids go to school. It's the business hours. No matter how much I don't feel like writing that day, it doesn't really matter because you have a three o'clock deadline before the kids come home. I've heard that's kind of a trick with writing is that it doesn't matter if you don't feel like no. writing. A writer must write. Yeah, you have to, especially deadlines are a really good motivator <laughs> because otherwise your editor starts wondering where is that story we've been waiting for. My historical novels because you've drawn from things in your own family, things yeah. from World War II, yes. why are you drawn to that? Yeah you know I love it. I've always loved the time period the 30s and the 40s for movies especially. I've always been in love with that since I was a kid. The music and the hardships people went through and yet finding hope on the other side no matter how hard life is or for the world at that time, for mm -hmm. World War or the Great Depression. And so I love those stories that you find a nugget of history that you think, how did I not know this? You know, everybody should know this. And when it comes to World War II, of course, and the Great Depression, there are endless stories out there, as you, as you know, that mm -hmm. you think you've heard everything about World War II and you haven't. And, and I love those stories. You joke about deadlines, but what kind of deadline are you on when you're writing something like this? Was this a year's work, a couple of years? Is there a time frame? Yeah, this one I had uh, changed publishing houses with this and it was pretty exciting in that they were really excited about putting the book out there and putting a lot of effort behind it. But it meant that they wanted it faster than I usually write. And so I really had to buckle down and put a lot hours in. So, so it ended up being probably a total of eight months that I wrote this Can book. Can you imagine in. writing a book in eight <laughs> months? You <laughs> overachiever. Well, I didn't sleep much. So oh if you count those gosh. hours, yeah. it was kind of like 12 months. <laughs> what are you working on right now? 
So, well, touring and mm -hmm. promoting and um, actually, you know, talking about a lot of events coming up, but also book clubs. It's pretty exciting if people want to go on my website, too. They'll find out I'm giving away free gifts right now for a short time for book clubs that are reading the book. Oh, that's like cool. Like party packs and wine charms because we're celebrating the end of Prohibition. <laughs> uh, finally, nice. right? So, and give us that website where we find you. Yeah, it's at Christina, with a K, as, as you know, mcmorris.com. Okay, so very McMorris. easy to find. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sold on a Monday. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so many more great books. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much.